Hey, welcome to day 34 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. Today, we're in Exodus 13 through 15. Exodus 13 picks up with the remainder of the Passover instructions, including instructions for sacrificing the firstborn of every animal that it belongs to the Lord, except when it comes to your children, you do not sacrifice your children, you redeem them. That should come in handy later as knowledge, but apparently... Israel forgets. Then we get a description of the route of the Exodus, the way they're going to go, and the pillar of cloud and fire. Fire by night, cloud by day, a massive pillar leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Then we get the Egyptian pursuit. We get Pharaoh chasing him down, and we see already that Israel freaks out. They don't trust what God is doing. In Exodus 14, verse 13, it says, Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and see the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you must be quiet. Then the Israelites get to the edge of the Red Sea. Pharaoh's closing in and God has Moses hold his staff out over the waters and he, he calls to the water and, and God brings the east wind that splits the sea. And it doesn't just make the waters recede so that they aren't covering some sort of land bridge or something, but it says it actually splits the water and they walk through the water as though there is a wall on either side of water. That is not the same as low tide and walking across a sandbar or something, as some naturalistic explanations would try to make out. Pharaoh tries to pursue them, but the Lord causes the chariots to get stuck in the mud and everything. And where Israel had a fine time walking through, no problem, no hindrances whatsoever on this dry ground. All of a sudden the chariots won't go through it and they get all twisted up. They get stuck. They get, they're lagging as they go through. Israel makes it all the way across. Then the Lord closes up the waters and they drown them. So then we have Israel's song, Israel and uh, led by Moses. Everybody sings a song and kind of recounts everything that God has done. And it's a pretty great exaltation of the Lord until you get the end of 15. They've just gotten done singing. They've just had such a great time. And they say, then Moses led Israel on from the Red Sea in verse 22. They journeyed for three days in the wilderness without finding water. They came to Mara, but they could not drink the water at Mara because it was bitter. That's why it was named Mara. The word means bitter. The people grumbled to Moses, what are we going to drink? So he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he threw it into the water, the water became drinkable. And the Lord made a statute and ordinance for them at Mara, And he tested them there. He said, if you will carefully obey the Lord, your God. Do what is right in his sight. Pay attention to his commands and keep all his statutes. I will not inflict any illnesses on you that I inflicted on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And then they came to Elim, where they were 12 springs and 70 date palms, and they camped there by the water. And this just sets up what we see from Israel over and over and over. The Lord is delivering them. There's the cloud of pillar and, f you know, the pillar of cloud and fire. And they are complaining, like, did you, were there not enough graves in Egypt? You had to bring us out here to kill us? Like, are you kidding me? Why can you not trust the Lord for five minutes and just believe that the God who's done all these plagues and saved Israel from all these plagues, but inflicted them on Egypt is going to also fulfill the thing he's already said. But it's every time anything even gets remotely hard, they turn away from him. And I get so frustrated and high and mighty reading about Israel and their lack of trust in the Lord. And then the Lord humbles me and reminds me of all the times I have failed to follow him, all the times I have fallen short of his ways and have lost sight of what he's done in my life and been discouraged and, and been terrified of what's going on. And I have lost track of what the Lord is doing. And instead of sitting in my self-righteous indignation, it brings me to a place of humility to read about how quickly Israel forgets and abandons God. And I just remember, I do this too, in a lot of different ways. And God never abandons Israel. There might be penalty, there might be punishment. I mean, they get all the way to where they end up exiled. And at the same time, they are still God's people. He has chosen them, he looks out for them, and he continually receives them when they turn to him, even when they have strayed. And I'm encouraged by that. So today, like 
The Lord says in chapter 14, when the people are complaining and they're afraid that Pharaoh's getting too close and they're going to be destroyed, don't be afraid. Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and see the Lord's salvation that he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you must be quiet. Stop complaining and turn to the Lord. Deliver all your complaints to him, but also let them go and trust God. He's got this. He's totally aware and he can handle it. And sometimes we need to let go of our complaints and our worries and our concerns and release them to the Lord and really just let him be God. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What stands out to you? What speaks to you in this? Share them in the comments here. Keep reading your Bible. We'll catch you tomorrow. Be rad for Jesus.